Welcome to The Real Board Loft. I'm Trip Foreman. Today we have real team rider Will Forrest with us. Will, welcome. Thank you. And we are talking about Will's AJW Potato Launcher 2, the PL2. PL2. Will, talking a little, little bit about this board, like kind of from what Adam puts out there on the website, OG PL, which is the original potato mm -hmm. launcher. That would be the Potato Launcher 1. Right. Uh, super popular board. Kind of people like loving that board, gravitating towards that board. A lot of our team have it as well. People wanted to have that style of board <clears throat> for more all around use, like not just like heaving tubes, mm -hmm. but something like kind of more of a daily driver, but like that outline and like kind of the, the feel of that board. So that's where Adam came up with the, uh, the PL2. So very similar look to the PL1, uh, just a little bit wider and a little bit flatter rocker lines just to give it a little bit more low end on like kind of like your everyday stuff yeah. so uh you've had this board for a while let's jump into it and like kind of get your impressions on it yeah so the one of the things about the board is like when i got the board i grabbed it straight off the rack knew absolutely nothing about like what it was for so when i looked at it and i was like i saw it i was like that's a fall classic hatteras board you can ride it in barrels, you can ride it turns, you know, just kind of like the board that you never take out of your car. Yep. This thing was always in my car for every session. And there was a few days where, you know, I started on, you know, a classic short board or maybe on a bigger barrel board and I ended up on this mm -hmm. just because it, it was so easy for this board to surf any type of wave. It really just kind of went in everything. So if I wasn't having a good session on another board, then this thing would just you know, clean up and I just liked it for, you know, just anything, whatever, whatever I needed to do. Let's look at uh, dimensions on this board. So uh, what's your height and weight, Will? I'm 5'9", five, 5'10", five, about 140 pounds. And the board is 5'5", five, five, 19 and uh, 0.38 wide and- it Looks like 2.3. 2.3 and just thick. It is really, really wide from what anything I've ever ridden before. Definitely probably the widest showboard. Mm -hmm. um, and I went up about a liter and a half, almost. And okay. And uh, uh, compared to what your shortboards are, yeah, compared to my average shortboard. So your your shortboards were like when you got this, they were around 24? twenty four. Twenty four, three, twenty four, five. Okay. Around that area. Okay. Twenty five point seven, and um, so not not almost a liter and a half, about a liter. Okay. But yeah, I, I when I first saw the dimensions for the board, I was a little worried that it was going to be a little too wide and a little bit too much volume. But mm -hmm. once I held it, I felt that like with the thickness of the board, but with how short it was, it only being a 5.5, five, that it would go really well like in the barrel or for just any wave. And also coming into wetsuit season, like once you get, once you get, you know, five mil wetsuit, boots and gloves, uh -huh. I thought that this thing would just be easy to ride compared to anything else. Like I'd be able to catch as much waves as I could. Right. What, um, now, like when most people are, are using the PL1, I mean, they're using it in like heavy conditions, yeah, right? bigger surf. So uh, let's talk about like the small end of this board, like kind of what sort of like small waves or kind of mushy waves it works so, in, because that's going to kind of differentiate it from the yeah. PL, PL1. I rode this board in as small as knee high and mushy at a contest. Okay. And it, it rode well. Okay. I think I made, made my heat on it. So I think I had tried my classic uh, small wave shortboard that morning mm -hmm. and it was just so mushy that I wasn't I wasn't having a good surf before the contest so I was like this is the only thing I had in the car grabbed it um, I've been riding as a quad but I threw a thruster in it just for the smaller stuff okay and I figured that with how thick it is and how wide that that mushy surf it would go really well and it did it, it flowed down the line really fast and a lot of times in the mushy contest surf um, you want to be able to flow from the top to bottom, you know, get in as many turns as you can. And yep. this board did exactly that. So I really, really liked it in the smaller stuff. How did you like, like the width and the, and the round tail in the smaller surf? Yeah. So it's an interesting <clears throat> outline compared to anything else that I've ridden. Cause it's so wide up front yep. and then it really gets really narrow in the back towards the tail. I found that like if you're riding a bigger wave in the barrel or something like that, you can step up a little bit mm -hmm. and you have so much drive and then you come out of the barrel and you step back 
and the board just loosens up dramatically. It's pretty crazy. And you can really put it wherever you want it in the wave. And this thing you mentioned earlier, this thing uh, works for turns, right? Not just, because a lot of barrel yeah. boards are good for the two, but then you get them out onto an open face for a turn and it's not, right. it's not like your short board yeah. anymore, you know? Um, I kept the quad <clears throat> in it if it was anything over waist high, yep. and it still turned really well. And I think that just from that just comes from the tail and how uh, narrow it is. You know, when you step back on the tail and it loosens up, you can, you know, really do any sort of turn that you would on like your average shortboard. Okay. So nice. And then what about on the uh, on the bigger side? Like what, what sort of surf have you been riding this thing in, you know, where um, people would normally think you're riding a PL1? Yeah, so I rode it maybe about a foot overhead, but I found that the size of the wave didn't really affect it too much. It was more kind of the surface of the wave. Okay. If it was really choppy and big, you know, with how thick the rail is and how wide it was, it was too chattery yep. to really like make a drop, like a super steep drop, just coming off the bottom, the board was moving a lot. But if it was bigger and, you know, clean and offshore, then it still handled well. Yep. Um, once you get it going really, really fast on a bigger wave, it is a little harder to kind of keep that rail in the water just because of how thick it is. Yep. I found that it was more like the surface of the wave. Okay, uh, more like the like the the chop or the wind, yeah, the wind the chop. surface. Okay. If we were surfing one day and it was shore break <clears throat> and probably a little bigger than head high and there was a rip in the yep. wave. Yep. And there was a couple drops that I just, it was just too chattery okay. to really just knife it to where it was in it when it's clean this board you can knife straight into the barrel so that was kind of the more the thing that um, affected it more than anything else i thought that's a great range i mean if you're riding this thing shin high in contest yeah. to, to like overhead dredging right. barrels here yeah and like i said I that's never, something never took it out of my car all, nice. all fall so nice uh what about like accessibility uh like for people that are not surfing at your level like so Let's say they have, you know, some shorter boards or a fish or maybe a short board or something like that, and, and they're looking at this board. Is it is it something that like most intermediate surfers could get on and, and surf it? Yeah, I think so. Um, the one of the things that I like the most about this board is when I grabbed it, I had no expectations whatsoever. Yep. The first session, it was about maybe a little smaller than head high, and you know just like it is normally here, a little little throwy, a couple little barrels, and from the very first wave. I knew how this board was going to ride. Like I, it was so easy to jump on this board and just get right into a session. Like there was no like figuring it out. There was no sort of like period where I had to figure out what the board wanted to do. Yep. As soon as I got on it, I kind of knew how the board was going to ride. And there was never really a time where I felt like this board is not for today. Okay. Like, yeah. Unless it got super big and choppy, this board was kind of going. So I think yeah. the average surfer is going to be able to get on this board and just have a good time. Like this yeah. board can really just be for anyone, I think. Yeah. And I think like whether it's home or, I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking like kind of Central America travel board. Yeah. You know, like if you're going to like El Salvador or Nicaragua mm -hmm. and you're like, okay, I'm just going to bring one board and ride it like no matter what, like this thing would fit in there. Exactly. This yeah, thing I mean, would fit in there really well. If you're going on a trip, like you said, Central America, and you're like, we could get anything from overhead tubes to, you know, smaller knee high, you know, turn waves, this is the perfect board that I would take on any surf trip, really. Right. This thing, no matter where you go, I feel like this board's going to have something to surf, so. Awesome. Well, Will, thank you so much for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts on the AJW PL2. If any of you out there have any questions on the PL2 or any of the boards that AJW makes or would like to place an order for one, either stock or custom order, you can always reach us at the shop, 252-987-6000, or look us up online, realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.